والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم واغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما تعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أبريز الله سبحانه وتعالى and he is the only one worthy of praise I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness I believe in him and I trust him. I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify, O Billy, that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is his sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation, an addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability fear Allah and don't die unless you are in the state of Islam. After this I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of reading from the book Riyad al-Salihin, Garden of the Righteousness, by Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullahi alayhi. And as I stated before many times, my respected brothers and sisters, this is very important collection of hadith that each Muslim should be concerned about having it in their own personal library. And that for you to try to read as much as you can in this book, it is a book that exactly is Riyadh al-Salihin. This is the garden. This is the bustan of who? Of the righteous people. May Allah make me and you among those who righteous, insha'Allah. And please have in the book. And today we have a new subject. <coughs> this is Kitab al-Adhkar, book number 15. And chapter number 244, This is the virtues of remembrance of Allah and the excellency of remembering Allah. And usually Imam Nawawi, when he starts his chapter, he brings some verses. And the unique about this book is similar to the book of Kitab al-Tawheed of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Rahmatullah alayhi, although that Imam al Nawawi was, of course, before Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, but you notice in these two books, a Quran, Hadith, statement of Allah, a saying of the Prophet, and after this, this is it, basically. 
So let's inshallah try to go to this garden and get some of these beautiful flowers and to try to enjoy looking at it, smelling in it, and feeling it in our heart. Especially we're talking today about the remembrance of Allah. Mentioning Allah's names. Bringing Allah's name in our heart, on our tongue, in our mind. Making Allah presence in our life. Saying Allah's name. Uttering Allah's name. And before I talk to you about some of these verses, this is one unique form of worship. Is unique. Why? Because if we talk about Hajj as an example, where you can make Hajj? You have to go to Mecca. Is this true? If you want to fast, when you're going to fast? You went for the month of Ramadan. When you want to make Salah, you have to make Wudu. So if you observe all form of Ibadah, you found some of them need special direction, like a Qibla, special place like Hajj, special time, or a special place, or a special preparation like Wudu or Tayammu. But Dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah, mentioning Allah's name, is the only form of Ibadah that you can do it any place, at any time, at any occasion. Doesn't matter if you have wudu, you have ghusl, or you don't have ghusl, you have ablution, no ablution. If you are in the mosque, or you are in the street, if you're flying, if you're walking, is a ibadah that is so simple and is so easy. But Allah is saying, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the remembrance of Allah is the greatest of all. Or as some of the Mufassirin, they say, ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ that means when you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. So the remembrance of Allah to you, the mentioning of Allah of you is much greater than your remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's see what Imam al rahmatullah alayhi is starting here by saying, exactly, wala dhikrullahi akbar. And the remembering of Allah is greater indeed than your remembering praising of Allah in prayers. This is Surah number 2945. And I'm going to explain to you that what is the difference between both. Dhikrullahi Akbar. That means the remembrance of Allah greatest of all things and all form of ibadah. Or the mention of Allah as some of the other Mufassirin had given the understanding. Because when you mention in the name of Allah, Allah will mention in your name. Okay? So, you remember Allah, you a weak person. You a small person. Okay? And you remember in Allah. But who's going to mention your name? And where is Allah among the angels? So, the remembering of Allah compared to what we remember in Him is much, much greater. Would you like Allah to mention your name? Subhanallah. Would you like your name to be there? Would you want Allah to say your name among the angels? That Allah would be proud. Say, look to my slave, servant, so and so. He's reading my book. He's praising me. He's glorifying me. So, subhanallah. Indeed, the remembrance of Allah much greater than our remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفًا Okay? And this is to teach us the adab, the discipline, the proper behavior of dhikr, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, therefore remember me. I will remember you. And he said, and remember your Lord by your tongue and within yourself humbly and with fear and without loudness in words. So not too loud, not to disturb each other and not to say that you barely can even mention with your tongue. So take the middle course because this deen is the deen of wasatiyah and you understand the wasatiyah and the middle course according the way of Allah, 
not according what you think is wasatiya. Like nowadays, everything call it wasatiya and keep shortening the deen, cutting from the deen, getting away from the deen, and under the name of taking the middle course. So now, we don't be loud with our dhikr. We don't shout. Because there is other people who want to remember Allah. There is other people who want to say dua. There is other people who want to glorify Allah. Some does this disturb them. So you have to have the adab and how to talk to Allah and how to mention Allah his name. This is something very important that you have to understand. It's something here we want to get the reality of dhikr and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Yes, we remember Allah. But here there is something new that you want to learn about the remembrance of Allah. That Allah say what? وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ Remember Allah, but what? كثيرا a lot a lot okay remember Allah a lot why that you may be successful you want to be successful not only remembering Allah but remember Allah again and again again and again and keep repeating it mentioning Allah's name a lot this is what going to give us the success going to give us the risk giving us the benefit Give us the success in everything. Give us the happiness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying also, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Those who remember Allah, a lot among the male and the female. Okay? So, it's not only for men, it's for women also. And we want to be successful, so we need to remember him, mentioning his name, and a lot that we can be successful. الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا ذكر الله كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا. Let's have a break, and during your break, try to say سبحان الله or الحمد لله or لا إله إلا الله. Remember Allah in any form you want. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتينا. Learning how to recite the Quran properly. Learning the meaning of what we recite. Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite. Trying to implement. What we learn in our daily life. We we'll listen to the participants and the guests. We'll take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, salat wa salam ala rasulillah. Welcome back. We are talking about the remembrance of Allah. Before we continue in our session, let's remind you about something that he mentioned, that I had mentioned before. And this when Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ فَذْكُرُونِي Remember me, I will remember you. You don't understand in the phrase that Allah forgets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond to forget. It doesn't fit the majesty of Allah to forget. But that means when you remember Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention your name as a result of mentioning his name. Not that he forgot about you or he don't know where are you or what are you doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows everything. He sees everything. He will acquaint it with everything. So remember Allah 
Allah will remember you, it shows you what you get in for remembering Allah. Hadith which reported by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Kalimatan, Khafifatani ala lisan, Habibatani ila rahman, Thaqilatani fil mizan, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Two sentences, two phrases that you can utter, but is not, although it's simple and easy to say it, to utter it, but it has a special quality. What it is, he said that they are heavy in the scale. And this is one of the things that the Muslims believe in it, al-mizan. We believe in the Mizan, and this is part of believing in the day of a judgment. That is going to be a scale, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wait our deed. Okay? فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ So the mawazin. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, although this is two sentences, two phrases, is easy to say with your tongue, to memorize, to repeat, but they are heavy. That means a lot of blessings for it. What else? Habibatani ila rahman Habibatani ila rahman Is beloved or loved by the most compassionate, which is Almighty Allah. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves the deed, He will love the door of the deed. Okay? So le learn this and remember this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves something, He will love what? He also, He will love the door of it. So if you want to love Allah to love you, so say these two words. Say it with me. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-Azim. Again. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-Azim. One time more. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al -Azim. Glory be to Allah with His praise. Glory to be Allah be to Allah, the greatest of all things. What does this Subhana mean? Subhana is a term of tanzih. Is a term that is saying Allah is a distant and far away from any deficiency anything that doesn't fit with the majesty of Allah Allah is away from it as example وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولًا we say subhanallah okay that the Jews they said what the hand of Allah is tight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ so when we hear this we say what subhanallah that means Allah is a distant, is a way, is far away, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Is al-ghani, self-sufficient, the most rich one, okay? Subhanallah, that means tanzih, that you say Allah is above. Say, Allah has walad, Allah has a son, or the angels or the daughters who say, subhanallah, glory be to Allah, that means Allah is above, what they describe to him. By saying this, Allah will love you. By saying this, your scale will be heavy. By saying this, you be there in the company of those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al -Azim. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, لَأَنْ أَقُولَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر أحب إلي مما طلعت عليه الشمس سبحان الله رواه مسلم see brothers me and you we don't know the value of the things but the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he is the one that been exposed to this knowledge he is the one who really can tell us about the value of the things the Prophet is saying to him to utter, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, 
لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر is dearer to him than possessing all the things than this in this life see what everything ما طلعت عليه الشمس okay is dearer to me than anything over which the sun rises when the sun rises it covers everything and I'm sure we heard about millionaire and billionaire they don't own too much maybe you an isle in the sea or a town or a country or whatever. Can you imagine for you to own the whole dunya? But even by owning the whole dunya, to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is dearer to him uttering this word than possessing all this dunya. Subhanallah. How much time we waste. How much time we waste that we can say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر Glory be to Allah Praise be to Allah There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Allah is the greatest But remember my brothers and sisters When we say this We need to say it in Arabic Let's say, say it in Arabic Not in Arabic Excuse my Arabic English tongue Okay There is nothing called Arabic But we talk in English because some of us, yes, Arabia is not our mother tongue. But when you want to get the reward of these things, you do not say, uh, glory be to Allah, glory be to Allah. You need to learn some words. You need to make some effort. It's not going to take more than five minutes, believe me, to learn to say it, even if you speak French, you speak English, you speak Spanish, okay? To say, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. This is dearer to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, than possessing everything. You want to get that reward? You need to learn them in Arabic. How much? When? Whenever. You want to say it? Say it. How much? Whatever. How much you can? Do it. But you are the winner. So don't lose your opportunity by saying subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allahu akbar in some of the following hadith we see some of the benefit of the remembrance of allah other than being a reward only and the blessings there is also a benefit for the remembrance of allah and you can remember allah by different ways this is the beauty of this deed he doesn't give you one thing. He gave you many alternatives. You can say subhanallah. You can say alhamdulillah. You can say salah ala rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can read Quran. You can make istighfar. All these things is what? Is part of the remembrance of Allah. But listen to this. Abu Hurairah may Allah be pleased with him saying, Man qala la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. له الملك وله الحمد وعلى كل شيء قدير في يوم مئة مرة كانت له عدل عشر رقاب وكتبت له مئة حسنة ومحيت عنه مئة سيئة وكانت له حرزا من الشيطان يومه ذلك حتى يمسي سبحان الله ولم يأتي أحد بأفضل مما جاء به إلا رجل عمل أكثر من. The Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying the hadith which he reported by Abu Hurairah. May Allah be pleased with him. He who utters a hundred times in a day those words لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد على كل شيء قدير. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. He is one. And he has no partner with him. He is the king. And his is the praise. And he is able to do all things. He will be have a reward equivalent to that for a freeing ten slaves. Okay? Watch for this now. Do you know how much is this? To, to free one slave? Only to say this hundred times, you will be getting so much reward 
as if some people in captivity, some people been jail, and you're going to pay money not to free them from the jail, you're going to free them from being slaves. Subhanallah. You are not buying a camel or Mercedes. You buying a life of a person and setting him free. And you get this reward for what? For only saying this hundred times. La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu. La sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku. Wa lahu al-hamdu. Wa ala kulli shayin qadir. How many times? A hundred times. What else are you going to get? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, and you will record it for you a hundred blessings and a hundred of your sins will be erased listen to what's coming okay and he will be saved Guard it again is the shaitan on that day till the evening. Subhanallah. We need to be protected from the shaitan. Is in your hand. Is in your hand. Is up to you. You want to be protected from the shaitan for tw- 12 hours? Say, La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al mulk wa la alhamdu ala kulli shayin qadir in the morning a hundred times. Thank you for watching. We see you later, inshallah, in another segment. Until I see you again, I'm your host, Muhammad Saad Adli from Columbia, South Carolina. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. And Allah is best.